check out that. You see that number one? That's right. I don't know if it's coming out backwards here on the mouthpiece, but this is the largest of all Bach trumpet mouthpieces. I mean, it's bigger than the A cup. It is the original Bach one mouthpiece. And even according to Vincent Bach, it has limited uses. Um, and for me, it has limited uses too. I got it mainly to record Almost Blue on. And so when you hear me play the trumpet solo in Almost Blue, it is being played on the largest Bach mouthpiece. So I just wanted you to know, I also have a sound sleeve on it as well. So today, I'm not really going to be going into mouth mouthpieces. I just wanted to use this mouthpiece instead of my fancy schmancy custom Bob Reeves. So, you know, we're, I'm, you know, we're kind of comparing apples to apples here. So this video is about all the emails and comments I get just, it's like perpetually, constantly about... Um, do I relax my lips when I play high? Do I tighten my lips? Um, roll in, roll out, and then uh, I guess loose lips. These are things that come up over and over again. You can read the comments in my various videos. I get lots of emails, and I even got students asking about it. They hear, contra I guess, contradictory advice out there from different players and different people. So I'm here to do some very close-up demonstration of my jobs while just playing a couple of notes. And I haven't even warmed up today. Literally, I haven't. I've done some lip buzzing. That's about it. So I'm trying to, and I'm going to keep this in a range that um, is reasonable. I'm not going to be doing this on triple C's or anything like that. It's just a typical range that most folks might be um, struggling with. So let's let's find out what loose lips can do when you're playing on the trumpet. Not very loose lips. You might equate this with um, kind of chops that aren't that strong. But if my lips are loose, let's get in there. There you go. You can see. Sorry, I have a little a little injury here from yesterday. But here we go. These are loose lips. <laughs> Loose lips vibrate slower, folks. The aperture, like most like this. Can you possibly play above the staff, get a great sound, be accurate, with a lot of power, with loose lips? I'm just going to have to tell you no. So I don't know who you were listening to. You're probably on the forum somewhere. and Someone's probably saying that um, you're too tight or whatever. You're not going to be able to play above the staff with loose lips. Frozen in time for a double pedal C. A very wide aperture, a very, very relaxed set of chops, very loose. You probably noticed an extreme rollout to be able to accommodate such low frequencies on the horn. You need to get that out of your head that somehow you're going to be able to wail on high C's and D's and E's with loose, relaxed lips. It just ain't so, no matter who tells you that. And um, if someone is a great player and they tell you that, then chances are they don't know what they're talking about. They just are blessed with natural talent. And they are thinking that they're playing with uh, loose lips, but they really are not. So uh, loose lips are great for um, pedal tones. Um, some pedal tones, obviously, like the pedal C, you can't play too loose. Let me go loose. The, even the pedal C won't come in 
unless you firm some things up. You can see that there's more tension there on the pedal C. Now, the more lip we have rolled out, the more loose and relaxed it is, and probably even a, a larger vibrating surface. An extreme rolled out. How about low C? Okay, now I'm going to freeze certain lip positions so you can watch. Low C, watch. They're rolled in, but um, not extremely. Relatively wide aperture. Now compare middle C to low C. More of a rolling, right? Let's see if I can get the light on it. If you notice the bottom lip is rolled in more, right? Low C. Middle C. Rolled in more. Aperture more narrow. I see. Significant roll in. Lips more tight, taut. Why are my lips, and why should, should your lips be rolled in and tighter as you go higher? The reason your lips are tighter is because you're meeting the resistance of air pressure coming through your mouth. And what the lip, the tighter lips have to do is they have to be able to grip the aperture closer together as you meet the mouthpiece. You can understand that if your lips are not tight enough, the aperture here will widen out slightly and you'll lose that note. Why will you lose the note? If the aperture becomes wider, the air becomes slower and the note will drop. Is that making sense to anybody out there? Tighter. In order to have this very narrow aperture in the taut um, firm lips here. Now they have to be firm here. They can't be loose. Folks understand this. You can't have loose lips in the upper register. You can't have a rollout. It's not going to work. This is part of the essence of my 16 week course. You have to build strength here. The strength I'm talking about is the strength of your lips and the embouchure surrounding it to hold the air compression in at a narrow or smaller aperture. Not larger, remember the, the double pedal C? Is that close? Yeah, it's pretty close. Look at the difference. Lots of lip out, right? You can't be doing that uh, above the staff is just is not going to work for you the strength I talk about increasing and when students have taken my stuff my courses and lessons they talk about an increase in strength they're talking about this your lips being strong enough to be rigid and snug in tightly the aperture the aperture is a little hole between your top lip and upper or top lip and bottom lip where the air comes out into the mouthpiece if you can't hold a very small, narrow aperture, you cannot um, engage the third stage of compression 
in regards to brass playing. And that's the air being sped up and stayed that way into the mouthpiece. You need the air to stay compressed until it gets into the mouthpiece. You have to have strength in your lips to be able to do that. You cannot be playing loose or rolled out. The high C, close. A little higher. And remember, I'm doing this on a Bach 1, so I don't even know how much I can go, but... Very tight. Very rolled in. Why is it that tight and rolled in for the double G? It must be so that the aperture, the hole here, can remain like a little pinprick. I bet the hole is probably no bigger than maybe the end of a toothpick. It's very, very tiny. And the power and the strength I'm talking about that I have in my lips is able to keep that contracted. Well, my hand wouldn't do justice. It keeps the hole contracted so that I can keep the pressurized air into the mouthpiece. That's the strength that we're talking about building up. You have to have this strength if you want to be able to play about the staff, number one. Number two, if you want to have a tremendous amount of endurance. Now, if you can do what I just did on, now this is the largest mouthpiece that Bach makes for a trumpet. If you can do, for example, the double G that you just heard me do, let's go down four notes. Um, let's say you don't even want to be a screamer. Uh, let's say you hate high notes. But you got yourself to the double G like that. G down to F to E to D to C, four notes, to let's say B flat. That means that B flat, B, and C right above the staff are almost effortless and you can play those all night. You'll have tons of endurance as long as you don't overblow. And other things being equal, you know, you, you're not sick or not overtired or stressed. That's why we increase the range higher, higher to the point where skeptics say, oh, we don't need all that range. Yes, you do need all that range. Just because you don't see it in your music doesn't mean that your body doesn't need a comfortable cruising zone for when you're playing your performances. So that is why you increase um, your range. That's one reason. The other reason, of course, if you want to you know, play high and show off and show about, kind of like what this guy does sometimes. Well, that's another reason. But the true reason is to extend your endurance and have more fun on this instrument. So lesson learned. You, you can't see it much closer than this, can you? You saw my lips. They have to roll in and become tight so they vibrate faster. But also, more importantly, uh, you constrict the air... Um, to the aperture that's very small and narrow with just like a fast compressed air coming out into the horn it takes a lot of muscle strength and if you don't have that ability you won't be able to go higher or if you get fatigued you'll drop notes that's why when you gas out you lose endurance a lot of it's because of muscle fatigue the lips just cannot hold that narrow aperture anymore so uh, Close up again. I don't know. <sighs> I'm not letting hardly any air come out between my upper and lower lips. What's the difference between me and you? Odds are you don't have the strength in your lips to bear down on that pressure and to keep that pressure going through your mouthpiece. Your lips are unable to do so at a certain altitude above the staff. Your lips then capitulate. They weaken or, they blow, or the air blows them out a little bit. As soon as the air compression blows out your lips, and we're talking about maybe not even mil smaller than millimeters, just a hair's width, and you can already lose a range that way, a half step, just psh, it goes down quick. There. That is a very in-depth and close-up 
reasoning of why a loose lips and rollout that um, I guess you're hearing about on the forums or maybe some famous player is talking about it, uh, but they're wrong because maybe they have a natural talent and they don't realize that they are using um, a tighter chop setup and a roll-in, but they are, even if, even if they don't think they are. I bet I could um, get with them in person and find out that they indeed are using a uh, tighter embouchure. You're simply not going to play above the staff with a relaxed, loose, flappy embouchure. Um, that's for pedal tones and maybe some kind of special effects. You have to build the strength here. Even all the air training in the world, we can get Greg Luganis to pick up trumpet. He will not be able to do what I just did because even though he might have much better lung capacity than I do, he does not have the strength to contain all that air. I'm Kurt Thompson. Um, I just wanted to get down and dirty and up close and personal. And I hope you enjoyed this detailed explanation and um, demonstration. Um, it looks like we got up close and personal, didn't we? We really did. So go back and rewatch this video. You should learn some things from this. Uh, I'm hoping a light bulb will go in your head and you could stop abiding and listening to this misinformation and chatter and distractive noise that you hear all over the internet. Uh, most of it's wrong. Uh, most of it's wrong because most of these people can't even demonstrate what I just did for you right now. They, you could, you know, twist them twist their arm behind their back and offer them a million dollars and they couldn't do what I just did on the largest Bach trumpet mouthpiece, the Bach 1. This isn't a 1C. It's not a 1B. It's not a 1A. It is the Bach 1 trumpet mouthpiece, the largest of all Bach trumpet mouthpieces. So until next time, by the way, if you like this, where's my thumb? If you like it, do a little bit of this. Subscribe, hit that bell notification, and you'll find out other videos that will pop up in your email uh, letting you know that I just uploaded something. And if you want to contribute a couple of dollars to the betterment of this channel, there should be a link down there for Patreon, and you can become a patron and be helping out the arts here on this channel. I'll see you next time, and I hope this was of information and some help. Bye-bye.